going to talk about a band that is perfectly suited for the 10 Awesome Songs series. Well, the band Grave Worm is definitely qualified. Uh, however, instead, we're going to talk about Ascending Hate, which is their ninth studio album, their newest studio album from right here in 2015, from right here yesterday. Yeah. Ninth studio album for a group that has pretty much no coverage as far as album reviews are concerned on YouTube, at least that I could see. If you have actually done one, then definitely link some of your fellow Nation members to it. That way they can check out your work. But from what I saw whenever I searched it, nobody, not a soul, which is a shame considering these guys are pretty good. I've been following these guys a little bit ever since Engraved in Black back in 2003, and their last album was four years ago, kind of right whenever this channel was starting to heat up, so I think I actually missed it. So, the first question that we have to talk about is what to really consider these guys, because they have elements of various, various facets of heavy metal. There's a little bit of gothic metal in there, there's a little bit of symphonic metal, uh, there's black metal, and there's melody. So, what the hell do you call it? Gothic, melodic, go uh, symphonic black metal? At this point in time? Sure. Why not? Who cares? They're Grave Worm, and I would probably stick them closer to the black metal category, with some of those little twinges being included in there as well. That's at least how they were, you know, initially introduced to me. But then again, it was a simpler time 12 years ago. This group is not afraid to get their long song right out of the gate. Seven Minutes for the Dream Heritage, which opens up this uh, album with a pretty foreboding introduction that launches into their full-scale assault. And they have a very nice repertoire to them whenever it comes to their sonic uh, blast. It's something where you will hear everything kind of peak at once, and it will be full-scale intensity. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of the way in which Vesperian Sorrow sometimes uh, was able to really dive into their tracks, and, and it just seemed like their intensity was all very, very focused during uh, every single moment. But whenever they wanted, but whenever Grave Worm instead wants to kind of tone things down and influx a little bit of melody and throw in a little bit of, of musical atmosphere, either that or a little bit of tone, it's something that they're not afraid to do. They are not afraid to put uh, their foot down on the brake a little bit and kind of give this a little bit more of a wider berth as a opposed to one that's just going uh, full tilt boogie in all cylinders for, you know, however many minutes that these albums end up being. Uh, this is instead something that causes them to use their space and use their time very, very well in trying to construct the narrative of a track. Uh, the same thing happens with uh, following tracks such as Buried Alive, uh, Blood, Torture, Death. These are two very good songs. In fact, I feel that the entire first half of this album is pretty well constructed. It's one where it balances that atmosphere and balances everything t uh, very well. Whenever you start to get into Stillborn and Liars to the Lions and get to the second half of this disc, really, uh, it starts to have actually that effect that... Even a band such as Grave Worm that has so many different diverse influences whenever you really consider the Pantheon sometimes can fall into. It's the fact that it does have a very similar sound to it as compared to uh, the first half, but it just doesn't have that same level of execution. It doesn't have that same level of songwriting flair. Uh, this is a weaker portion of the album, at least by my consideration, and just one that at this stage of the game causes the whole idea of uh, of Grave Worm sound has sort of become a little bit more tiresome. It's, it's unique, but it's not really one of a kind enough to really delve somebody into classic territory based around hearing that same general motor idea ten times. It's instead one where I feel that they could use this plethora, this, this smorgasbord of influences a little bit more proactively and really cause it for some better songwriting as far as throwing in a twist or turn here and there. Am I necessarily downplaying the music that is really presented here? No, this is still stuff that is very, very mid to high tier whenever it comes to this category. But it's just something where the longevity and the, uh, and the process of it remaining in your mind after the fact does not work or peak just as well as the first 
half of this album does. The first half really does stay in your mind with a little bit more of a sincerity, with a little bit more of a frequency than the second half. Though I will say that Nocturnal Hymns Part 2, the death anthem, the very final track on this album, does pose something very interesting, which showcases another one of Grave Worm's influences, which is some riffing that reminded me a little bit of Iron Maiden, which makes sense considering they did a cover of Fear of the Dark a long, long time ago that many people actually attributed to the incorrect bands bands such as Kalima or Children of Bodom whenever they were trying to share this file on P2P sites, which P2P just sounds like you, you pissed on somebody and it filled up like a P reservoir and then they peed and now it's just everyone's pissing. Overall, this album isn't too bad. I really enjoyed the, uh, the overall product and Grave Worm's always been a band that uh, the very scope of what they do and they, uh, the scope of their narratives is always presented very interestingly. I just feel like this is an album where the first half has a little bit more to offer than the second one, so that lacking of both sides really being a cohesive whole in that regard does hurt it a little bit. I would probably give this disc a 79 out of 100, uh, real close to an 8 out of 10. If you want to round up and be that way, you go right ahead, do whatever you want. Uh, solid work, one that I would certainly check out. Uh, a lot of their stuff from the uh, the 2000s, rather, is pretty, I would put it a little bit higher. Um, it's a little underappreciated, especially albums such as Engraved in Black, or in the stuff that came a little bit previous to that. So I would definitely just dive into these guys and check it out and see if it's something that is... Uh, really right up your alley. For fans of black metal, for fans that enjoy a little bit of melody, that also like the occasional twinge of, of a symphonic idea or a gothic idea or just a band that's willing to do something interesting like cover Losing My Religion by R.E.M., then this is a group that you should definitely investigate considering they do have that side of them that is pretty darn interesting. Plus that cover is just really wild. It's kind of interesting to hear it. It's a weird take. And they've also done other songs as well. So it's definitely one where they're not afraid to cover another track and it doesn't necessarily have to be metal. What did you guys think about this album? What did you guys think about uh, Ascending Hate by... Grave Worm, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, everything that you do for this channel. I thank you. I thank you. That was dumb as fuck, but I'm keeping it because why not? Peace.